Hey guys, today we've got a little bit of a different one. We've got Gavin, aka Wuka, from another YouTube channel called Hologram Productions, which you might know. I personally um, have been watching his videos um, and he actually reached out to me and said, hey, I'd love to do a video on your channel. And I said, hell yeah, let's do it. Um, so yeah, he's here with us today. Uh, he did a video that's like over five hours long, but I think it's well worth the watch. Um, he starts it off and kind of takes it pretty far, but then goes in a completely different direction. Uh, it turned out great and he played it in a club and tested it and he's in love with the song and uh, he said it went down really well. Uh, I think the song turned out great myself, so yeah, a little bit of a deviation from my normal intro which shows like all the achievements and the labels and stuff. Wuka's more at like the beginning of his career, but it's showing a very promising uh, start, so I think he's definitely one to watch and I think you'll pick up a lot of tips from the way he produces and uh, he's also quite an entertaining guy, so hope you enjoy it. Hello, uh, Gavin here. So I am here in Ableton with my default settings in place. And I have already created this project called the Basic Waves Project. I'll probably rename it at some point throughout the lesson, whereby I'm going to dip into some of the Basic Waves uh, packs, which Jules very kindly sent me to play around with so that I could make a track from the beginning to the end. Starting this video, I've literally no, uh, no idea how long this is going to take. But I do know it's going to take a little bit of fuel. So excuse me while I just sort myself out. Just a little bit of coffee. Right? So. <clears throat> nope, I need a bit more. Mmm. Lovely French blend. I'm not going to mention the brand. How shall I begin? I'm going to begin with some kind of pad or some kind of drone sound. So let me just go to my pad default. I was I was um, clubbing this weekend and I went to see Paul Thomas play for Rhythm Horizons in Oris, London. And I heard a track which... It sounded to me like it was in B minor. In B minor, it sounded to me like a very, very evocative kind of key. So I'm just going to give myself the chord of B minor. Okay, so maybe run with that chord. Let's create sort of like an atmospheric drone using that. FM. Okay, Redux. Let's put this off. Supermassive. Mm. And make sure that this nicely compressed in the mids because it can be quite a dry sound. So put that compressor here in the mid. And I'll put another one here after the reverb. Maybe make this a bit longer. Uh, Command J and uh, duplicate that. Okay. 
Right, so what I want to make, because this is kind of my own sensibility, I'm aiming to make a track which is like a progressive house track, but I want it to be very, very deep. I want it to be emotive, I want it to be punchy. And in the best case scenario, once it's finished, it would need to be strong enough for me to be confident to play it out the next time I'm DJing. And the next time I'm DJing is going to be at Colors in Hoxton. I mean, as of literally making this video right now, it might be out of date by the time the video goes up. On the 28th of September, I will be, or will have been, uh, performed, performing at Colors in Hoxton for Elevation London. That's Johnny Markson's label, and I want one more track to play out which is proggy deep melodic and emotional so that's what i'm aiming for here so i'll start off as that is my basis uh so i'm gonna go and find a kick and i'm gonna find it in uh the basic waves artists kick pack let me try artist kicks fine too something that is deep and punchy so the first thing i'll do is create a midi track here in the kick zone so command d so always put everything on c3 quarter notes and i not only like to listen to the kick but i also quite like to look at it yeah i think i can go for that I reckon. Okay, so now let's duplicate that and call this Tom and I'm going to create a nice Tom groove. Or no, hold on wait a second. No, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do I'm going to do a bass because I kind of want a, a sort of a sync. I think I want to I'm struggling in my ear between whether I want a syncopated bass or I want a constant reese bass. So maybe what I think I'll do is I'll just go ahead and fucking do both. Um and forgive me, but I do have a preset that I've used before which I, which has worked for me, which I'm going to try to do the same thing again. So I'll go to the stab bass. Okay. So I'll start off by taking the kick midi, putting in... Do, do, do. Start off putting in on the offbeat, quarter notes. Do, 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 do. Okay, so 16 notes. Make sure that the uh, MIDI doesn't tail off into the kick. quite sharp on the highs, um, maybe a bit more of the sub down here. So let me remove some of the pluck in the envelope, go to the value and turn on the peak, make it a bit softer, a little bit deeper. Okay, so let's run with that. It's already sounding relatively deep. Go to the EQ. Okay, so I'm gonna bring down the volume of the bass just a little bit. Okay, fine. So call that bass. Pluck, and let's duplicate that, and then call another bass, which is called Bass Reese. Because like I said, I want this to be deep. And, uh... This is going to be one long sustain note. And the, the Reese bass instrument... by Reese bass. Oof. Well, that is insanely deep, and also it's insanely over-compressed. 
So first things first, go into the MIDI and then transport this up. Yeah, this re-space is very, very dark. So I'm going to try to remove some of the darkness from that, maybe remove some of the drive. Make it a bit more gentle. Turn the volume down at source. Cut off to about here. Side change to the kick. So we are gonna, we already got a nice dark vibe going. And now it's time for me to uh, create the tom riff, but I want to make sure that the tom hits are not hitting at the same time as the bass or the kick. Uh, okay, so that means whatever tom I use, I need to avoid that. Let's start off by um, using the same sample as the kick, except shorten it. Something syncopated. Okay. Going to the sixteenths. Is this even activated? Okay, so let me bring that up a bit. Just this is just basically these are just the markers that I need to avoid. I think I can put there. that work uh, because again sitting in the offbeat da, da, da. now I'm not going to use this sample I want to use a different uh, sample so let me see what is available in the basic oh hang on a second <clears throat> ah fuel right um I won't do that again. I will pause the next time I do that. Uh, joke done. Deep organic percussion. Dulles. Top loops. What happened if I go into full here and go into slice mode? And I try shortening uh, the no, warp and then shorten the beats. Mm. I, I, I like the sound of the thumb, but I don't like the sound of the hats at the same time. I want to find something deeper. These top, well, this is tops, so tops means it's going to have uh, high frequencies. Drum fills, drum loops, percussion loops. Deep. Something something that's deep. Come on man, give me something deep. Deep 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 deep. Potentially the same problem. Jesus Christ, highlight everything. Command A.
No. Still not deep enough. Something deep, be deep, be deep, 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 tops. Yeah, it's gonna have the same problems, just full of tops. Um, what if I try to steal from an in a commercially acceptable track? Right, um, I might just use like maybe some toms and stuff in the beginning of a one of these tracks. Let's try this. I don't want this one. to remove these. if it's too top heavy. Let me go around a bit. Let's run with it for now. Duplicate the kick. Uh, call this the hat four to the floor. Go into eighth notes, push these forward, and replace it with a hat sound, which I can definitely find in the drum one shot. <clears throat> Ooh, it's way too bright for me. Oh, I quite like these sounds. Um, I know I'm gonna try to do something with all of these, so let's command J and let's uh, create uh, Second drums with this. Let's, let's put the same MIDI here. Delete this. Go to slice mode. Let's play around a bit. Let's have fun. There's so many other hits, so many other sounds that he spent time toiling over. Why not use more of them? Okay, so... Limit the fuck out of these. And then 
let's go and put some interesting effects on this. Uh, draw map mass one. Which is going to run it through grain delay and pitch it down, put ambient iridium on it. The other thing is we're gonna need Uh don't like that hat. It's gonna give me tinnitus and I don't like tinnitus. Hey, I got tonight. It, 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 I get the ring in my fucking ear. No. It's just too bright. Look how sharp that is. Okay. Sorry, boy. Uh, I'm just going to go with something which is reliable. Pete. There you go, Pete. Thank you. Shaker Pete. Reliable. Works. Uh, bow coder, because it's smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And now let's make it a bit brighter. Bright enough. And now let's put LFO to give this some movement. Attach the LFO to the start time. Go between zero and maybe 20%. Turn on the snap. Maybe a bit less. Put on random. Turn up the random so therefore it hits at a different point of the sample every fucking time. So this is kind of cool. Working for me. Uh, I want to make sure that the volume is consistent. And uh, no, I'm not going to sidechain it to the kick. I'll just have it sidechained the whole time using my LFO tool. What's the... Yeah, it looks relatively uniform, but let me just... I'm going to make this uh, longer, excuse me, I'm going to make this doing that noise. Remove that move. Only have that come in the second half. Cool. Nice Friday there. Okay. Uh kick. So now let's find ourselves a clappy clappy clap 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 clappy clappy clap 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 nice dark reverbed. Delete that delete that loop here you got some nice clappy poos in the basic waves packs. So let's go to a basic wave. Question is which one do I sodding well want? I am spoiled for choice.
more shaping. A bit more here. More here. Maybe I'll put the tiniest amount of LFO movement, the tiniest amount, uh, on the start time. Turn up the snap, and then maybe 1%. Maybe random, the tiny. Because if it's too much, the volume will change significantly. Okay, that might be what we need for now. Okay, uh, top loop. Do we have any top loops? I don't think that um, Basic Wave says any top loops. Oh yes, he does. He's got a whole fucking pack called top loops. We got some juicy, juicy, juicy top loops. Let's go with this one. Some of the stuff, it's quite sharp. Maybe just... Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 good. I'm licking that. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, top loop mid, and then I'm gonna have another top loop side. That means is I gotta find a top loop, which is kind of. It doesn't really matter which one it is, to be honest with you. I don't want it to be too sharp, though. Ooh, okay, I'll put that in. But I'm really go really gonna um, turn the volume down on this. And again, making sure that the the volume is down, and I'm going to put the Haas effect on this. Just put it into the sides. I just want to basically give general stereo width to my drums. And... My temptation is, what would happen if I were to take this and put it on the offbeat? I would like there to be a bit more movement on the sample, or at least the potential for movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the auto filter, an auto filter here, and I'm going to run the drive through. So I'm going to record in automation over the, um, maybe over a slightly longer period than this. So let me go. Uh, duplicate this, duplicate that, duplicate that. Okay, so I'm going to call this texture one. I might put in another texture. Okay, so turn off the record button and record here. So there's going to be some movement on this sample. 
so the drums feel alive, constantly evolving. I'll, on the first half of each measure, lower down to the mid, lower down, let's boost the lows, and then coming towards the end, a bit of sharpness and highs. Okay, fine, that'll be the movement. Sounding pretty groovy. Time to think about a lead. Play around for a second because I got this nice saw plug which I made in syrup. likes it. Okay, I can groove to that. I'm going to need another pad. Got an instrument here called Pad Maker, whereupon I can turn almost any sound into a pad. I say a pad, it's more like a lead type pad. And uh, for that, I have this, this is really, really cool sample I found in a pack called Vinyl Samples from Mars. It's just this epic saw synth. I would use something for basic waves. There's some really, really cool stuff in there, but I, I, the last, let, let me double check. The last time I checked the basic waves um, packs, uh, particularly Dreams, which has got some fucking amazing stuff in both. And I will actually come back to this some really delicious sounds here. You see, I love all that. But I just wanted, like, one isolated tone. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come back to some... Like, even that, even that, even that, 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 that. Okay, okay, so that's probably not what I'm aiming for, but, like, I, I, I quite like the sound of that. Did my pad maker preset just 
Is this an older version? Hang on a second. I, I used to have a whole bunch of um, macros on them. Well, gosh darn it, I don't anymore. That is a buggering bugger of a bugger. I, I used to have things like the filter attached here. I used to have things like the fucking drive attached to here. Um, I didn't really do much with this. That's that's just there. I don't think I want to accentuate the highs because I think I was trying to accentuate the highs of a much less sharp sound before. It's quite, quite a noisy thing here. Um, I'm actually going to change the settings on this. Let me go to, uh, yeah, reverb, but I'm also going to go to put on an echo here. An echo, uh, not dotted sixteenths, I th not, uh, sorry, not dotted, but sixteenths. Three to four. Long reverb, accentuate the mids. Ping pong, I would say. And let's go to macro three. Okay, this is going to be, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to have this as a flourish. Um, I like a little decoration, but I'm not going to use it now. I'm not going to use it now. Uh, but like I said, I wasn't able to find a, a one hit there. So this really, really nice sample is this one. I really like this. It's a really, really nice sample. I'm going to loop it. Left and right. Crossfade. It's going to have one voice. Was I working on the wrong one the whole time? One sec. No, don't re-trigger the goddamn thing. Now, do not ask me why the feck it's doing that. There's probably something very obvious I'm overlooking here. Oof. Hmm, there's a tricky thing to figure out. You know, I'm gonna do. I think I'm probably just gonna try to try to do it in simpler because there's a glitch there which I haven't come across, which I'm not quite sure how to fix. And I usually just start from scratch when that happens in the instrument. So let me just find the same sample again. Polar sample. Create a loop. Attack. Yeah. Up on the attack. on the loop. Make sure it's not on warp, which means you can create a nice crossfade. which is just I really love this reverb shimmer is great as well and the, the 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 plate is fantastic but I just I do really like this group filter uh, and drive and I think
See, I love these kind of dark sounds. These kind of glide sounds are really exciting in the nightclub. And, um... Actually, I'm going to put an auto pan in there as well to create, like, a... A chop. Turn off the amount. Turn off the rate. Turn off the phase. Turn up the shape. Go on to... We need to fuck with the offset. Also turn this into my gated reverb. Same thing. Make sure that the auto pan sequence is the same for both, which is 260. Guess let's play around with that a bit. mistake. I wanted that to be... Oh, fuck off, Android. I wanted that to be... See, now this track has really got atmosphere in it. Okay, so I want there to be a version of this where the key changes. So I'm thinking, do, 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 stepping down. So let's delete that. That means the same thing for the bass. Do. Although this might be getting too subby. EQ. Base pluck group both of them together in a group which is called drums. Base. Right, so go into the EQ. This might be too much. Let's give it a go. I'll do a combination of the both, but that'll go down one. I got an idea. Do, 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 do. So that means... 
So I've got that, that pad here, and then I'm going to do the same thing here, call this uh, main lead. Um, I'm going to use this, I think. This is essentially like a one hit that I got from Diva. This key is so hard to play in. What is this? I'm gonna make this easy for myself. So now I can play in C. Right, so much easier. I had, to, I had to transpose it because it was all like black notes and white notes just playing on my keyboard here. hooky than that. Let me let me play around again. I'm actually going to just record a little bit.
I think I think we got something with that. in that uh, there's something in that I think the end is kind of wrong yeah nothing there I'll put start actually making uh, to really really I want to do a mix down on the drums so EQ glue glue multiband saturator and G G-Clip is my favorite clipper. This is the reason why I'm still using um, Ableton 11 as opposed to Ableton 12 for this project. As much as Roar is fantastic, um, I really like G-Clip just for the simplicity of the, the visual of the oscilloscope and the way you can sort of shave things off really nicely. Um, you can achieve the same thing with K-Clip, and there are other clippers that you can use in Ableton 12, but it's just, I just really, really like this one, and that's why I'm a stalwart for this program, which is why I'm using Ableton. Okay, limiter. Now, my approach here is that I like to have everything maxed out energy-wise as if I'm mastering the drums and then mastering the bass. So the bass and the drums are essentially ready as if for a finished track. And that tends to give me the excitement to finish the rest of the track. It's usually the way it works, and this approach generally works for me. And I'm going to essentially find problems that need fixing, and I'll try to fix as many of them as I can in the individual instruments themselves, and then the rest of it I'll do here. Um, yeah, let's turn that off for now. In fact, let's group everything, and then we'll activate one at a time. Well, leave the limiter on. One thing I can tell straight away is I do want to get a bit more spank out of this kick, by which I will add some transient and some crunch, but only a tiny amount. Drum bus is a very, very bad habit of adding uh, some unwanted frequencies around this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the bass fundamental. Make it a bit subbier. Too much. about boosting the transient a bit. Okay, I'm going to experiment with um, adding another transient to this. So I'll group this, duplicate this, and I'm going to call this trans. Uh, just shorthand. And I will get the EQ ready. And I'm going to put in here um, some kind of sample. 
Where will I get samples? Basic waves. I got loads of stuff here. You can make a transient pretty much out of anything. that much because you just need to imply the base without actually having so much of it. I'd rather accentuate the sub and the highs. Um, the, the punch, I think, is going to get a little bit knocky, for my taste. The other thing is, what key is that it? I didn't even consider the possibility of toning it down. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like to make my kicks deep. Okay. So, now, in the mix down. Down here, I would say. Clap. Get a bit more, I'd say. Turn up the limiter there. There's not really that much need. I'm not getting that much out of this. Because I think that there's plenty of mid frequency in the kick. You don't really need it. You're not getting that much out of the clap anyway. Kind of a gentle kick. Kick. Clap. We got enough brightness in the top loops. Yeah, we're getting a plenty of brightness here. But let's just 
brighten it more. boost around here, boost the subs a bit more, okay so now it's glue time, tag 3, release out 4, pull the pressure down, get about 1.5 game reduction, making very very gentle settings here, it back out 1.4 1.4 now really fast tag really fast release fast ratio too much let's limit the range soft lip that's about 1.5 push that out let's go for 1.11 ratio on the lows getting about 1.5 game reduction that's too much 1.3 will do, so let's add that back. Okay, we'll put 1, 2, 3 in the mids. Let's get maybe minus 2.5 game reduction. 2.6, 2.9 is probably too much. 2.7, I don't want to make the drums too dry. 2.6 probably still too much. 0.3, no, 6, that'll do. So let's go to 2.5. Okay, and now let's get the higher ratio here. So you can press it to about minus three, and let's bring that back out. Saturator, minus one, sorry, minus one, plus two. And G-clip. Soft clip. I'm gonna shave it off. It's like shaving off the stubble. And I'm gonna use the EQ in order to make sure that there's no stereo in the low end. There is a bit of stereo in the in the uh, uh, the tom. Kind of sounds cool in your headphones. I don't know if I want to keep it though, do I? Because it's very, very tempting to boost the mids in, because it sounds cool in your ears. But you don't think you really need it though. That's yeah, nice. So now let's have this in conjunction with this. Okay, so the kick is almost up to 12. I think the bass can afford to come up a little bit more. Calm down the highs a bit. And now, Okay, so there we go.
think it's time uh, to bring down the volume of the bass and the drums. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Now it's starting to th time to think about a drop, or at least a breakdown. Blame working for me for the flourish. I, I, I'll have to come back to that. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna take a quick pause so I can go for a pee pee. Pee pee finished. Uh, let me just have another listen here. Yeah, we're gonna need a, a second arp. Uh, I'll call this arp one. This is gonna be arp two. And for arp two, I'm actually going to utilize the arpurator. I'm not going to use this instrument. Um, square pluck. It's a serum preset. An arpeggiator. Uh, I'm going to MIDI effects. So let's... Oh. Fucking perfect. L loves it. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. So...
started to fuck. That'll be why. Oof. I did not perfect this particular preset. Is there a lot of drive? Oh, yes, lots of drive. A lot of drive. Now we need to pull that back. I'll do a whole other length, which is just... was not good enough, it was not good enough, it was not good enough. So let me improve it. point uh, that's gonna stop and that's gonna stop and I reckon so too will this short emission your line To get this pluck right. Start recording in some movement.
Have we got enough stuff to do an arrangement? Uh, perhaps. Yeah, we're gonna have to add some other stuff, but I kind of want to get into the arrangement now. So create a silence of 32 bars. And I'm gonna I'm gonna have um, a separate filter for the opening. So there's no there's not going <clears throat> to peak on this. Okay. So the clapping coming in, not for a while anyway. Uh, maybe oh yeah, any top loop that has like the equivalent of like a clap in it, like I think this one here. Yeah, okay, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clap from the top loop in the first 32, maybe 64 bars. I'm going to do that. Is I will literally copy and paste over just the clap samples. Okay, so we can loop this, man J, and this is going to be the top loop sample for the beginning bit of the track. Cut off to here, cut off here, and probably put a, a, a reverb on it. Okay. Actually, no, no, uh, that, that, that actually is just going to be for the kick. That also, I think. Okay, so starting out maybe one, maybe 19, and then moving down to
but still I don't want the clap coming in. Clap it, 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 clap it. Oh, thank you. And what'll happen is. And we need the drone as well. I kind of want to change these chords. It's more motive. J. That should also come in a bit earlier. And that'll be the final point. So we're going to have another silence, 33 to 41, create a silence, which is probably eight bars long.
know, at some shouldn't be all the way in. Uh, re-enable. And then, fuck you, everything is in. <sighs> and then here, again. Fuck you. Everything is Sure, the EQ is right. Okay, that tiny little thing there, I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. something in that. We're gonna need a noise maker. Crash bleeps noise riser. Create a MIDI called noise maker. Uh, noise maker. Highest note possible. Uh, 
Uh, go to the filter, go to the amount, go to the rate, and also making sure that this is side-chained to the kicky poos heavily, and also that it's not overly bright. Okay, so I'm going to record two, one right there and one right there. And I would like the reverb to be quite expansive and not too high on the brightness. So let's go. Actually, why am I doing this? I think I know, I know the arc I'm looking for. I'll just go to about that high and then low down. And then for the main drop, I'll go even higher, maybe? Let's see. It might be too bright. Probably okay, and then the amount, and then suddenly, let's try that. There's a whole stew of too much crap going on, so let's create another silence of 32 bars. Excuse me, my god, did that go into the microphone? I'm an animal. Right, put that here. Definitely none of brightness. Make this more bright.
Yeah, let's not forget about this. And get more out of this. Okay, let's start again. How long have I been going? 20 minutes. Holy crap. It's been fun though. Why does that sound like a bang all of a sudden? Bongo. Because of this sound over the top of it. Ooh. that sound. Sing something in the drums. Look, that curve, I think we could improve on. One or two things here. Maybe not Redux, maybe Erosion. I'm going to use the fab filter cutoff because the fab filter has a really, really good um, just absolute f you know high cut at brick wall. And then I can push things right up until the wall.
I am going to experiment with one more sort of clap loop and if I don't like it, I'm leaving it as it is. A, a sort of a clap loop that has um, <clears throat> a more of a flam sound to it. So clap loop and I'm going to use the same kind of effects I had on this top loop here. Instead of going to the basic waves, I think just this one time I might go to Vengeance. Although Vengeance packs, uh, Deep House, where are they? Um, loops. Mm. Well, that's probably going to sound fucking stupid. Um, because I don't want to just arbitrarily put bongos in there, but I want to. No, it's not complimenting. Okay. Strong possibility. However, in terms of the volume, I'm going to deprioritize the volume of everything except the clap.
let's create another silence here, which will be 106 minutes. I think that's. Yes, it is. bit here. will be another opportunity for this bad boy.
that point. And then we want all the drums to come back in. One, two, three, four. What kind of bass riff do you want? I suppose something similar to this. Hey, this one. I think that one. Maybe this one. with a big clap. Boom. Gonna go right there. Okay, so... So yeah, the video cut off uh, at one point and I think I was up to the point whenever I was trying to come up with a clap for this last bit just before the drop, which happens at the last quarter. Yeah. So, one, two, three, clap, and then the drop. So, let's go to basic waves, type in the word clap, and see which one will be suitable. Probably, I mean, I'd quite like to use like a 909 clap, and if I can't easily find one, I'll just... that one. Nope. Those drums, clap, 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 clap. Drum, one hits, claps. This one work. Possibly. No. Possibly. Sure it's not too bright. Yep. Okay, I think I'm okay with that for now. Yeah. Now it's about the post drop. I'm thinking actually I want to strip this down a bit. I'm not gonna have that. Let's keep that bit going. Some 
nothing to happen. That, yeah, the white noise is getting too much. Re-enable. Re-enable automation. Yeah, and also the white noise. Re-enable this whole thing should go one two three four five six seven eight is my guess <laughs> Now the noise is way too high at this point So need a snare roll command audio. Actually no. Create MIDI snare roll. Sixteens. Snare MPC. This one. EQ. Reverb. Cut off the lows. Make sure there isn't too much of a build up here. Make sure that the highs aren't too piercing, which they may very well become. It's probably going to be a little bit too loud. Um, put the reverb on, no pre delay, big size, big decay. Let's try that amount of reverb. Let's also have glue ready uh, before the sample. But at, so I just at source, so therefore if volume doesn't get too loud as you open up. Um, let's accentuate the highs. Let's not have the reverb, reverb anything. That note. Maybe not quite that big. This needs work. Um,
see the drop is always the hardest bit to get right and it's usually the thing that takes the longest to do and here I am trying to rush it there, perhaps. Maybe the frequency should be at the highest there. the side change should be quite so heavy. much of an arc. Maybe less of an amount. that was loading, maybe because I was trying to save it. Yeah, let's have a bit more grind. Just play around with this for a while. Recording. together.
also put a bit of reverb on this one. Record. that. with this. I don't know how much of this I'm going to keep in. just from there. So, so whenever the claps should come in. Eight bars. So that tap should come in maybe with a reverb. Same thing here, perhaps. Try to anticipate like a DJ end and then just have this out here. And I'm going to make the the melody stop. Move. 
moving. Maybe just that one there. And then in terms of the plug. There's not going to be any claps. I think the claps will probably stop at that point. Maybe just gently roll out. Okay, so six minutes and 30 seconds, the most bald arrangement possible. So now we've got to go and analyze what we've got. And um, de definitely, 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 we need to tone it down. There's a lot of, the, I mean, the, the energy is very high. It's very, very dark and I need to, I need to calm it down a bit. But we have the bare bones of an arrangement. Okay, those sort of, this, there's a top sound there, which is really, really nice, which I don't think we should start with. Maybe just outright turn that up. Thank you. 
group text. Maybe that top step should come in actually. But there's that click, click sound, which is really lovely, but I'm thinking that maybe we can withhold that somehow. Let me... So let's play around with um, returns, I suppose, sends. Sounds quite loud there. from the beginning. It's a lovely dark and textural beginning. Now forget the slap back. back delete it. longer 33 to 41 means create another silence eight bars long so copy all that and paste it over
really liking this to be honest with you, this bit. iron type sound. I'm just going to play around, I think, with uh, maybe, put the mix up, and I'll play around with the filter live. I want to get this right. Yeah. I forgot, turn this off. Now let's record from here. should come in less gradually. And I think that the drums should come in earlier and that this should be turned on at this point. Ooh, that 
was quite quite harsh. Oh, yeah, that's fine. This filter suddenly. That's why you get that. So let's have that smoother. We'll turn off, I would say, here. So maybe... Yeah, every now and then it's gonna go... It's going to go from the first to the fifth on this one. Maybe just... Last one I'm not going to go for, it's a bit much. I'd really like if we put these chords deeper at this point. Okay, so let's have a listen there. Too damn dark. that reverb um i'm gonna put in a super massive the that's the reverb which i actually had in the preset but frankly i should just use super massive medium massive vocal with that turned all the way up and now i will go and put this to macro four and re-enable <laughs> Let's try that 
try that again. I think maybe I'll just stick with this one. I'm curious to see if one of these... Curious to see what happened if we change the kick somewhere here.
in this case, this would have to change. I think that works. Mm -hmm. So nice. So command J. Let's uh, go this one green. Where is the clap? Tops. Command J. And green as well and oh command J so There we go. actually do as we didn't we didn't actually figure out um, if the bass cooperates as well Oh look, whatever, it's subtle enough.
off a lot. A little more subtle. Just a little bit less gritty. So at this point, I want to put on some uh, bass control. Basically just something I do to control the mids and the lows. And to clip it. So that the so that the dynamic range is limited. pulls up for one second. Okay. Nice and subby. There's a part of me that tells me that maybe the bass is a bit busy. Probably is to be honest with you.
I could have figured out an easier way to do this. Can't do 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 do. There we go. Um. Okay, now I gotta go back. is happening to the energy here. Okay, start again. I lose my run of the levels of things.
missing something there. putting in this drum filter thing that I created which simultaneously rolls off the highs and the lows and adds a bit of reverb. the reverb will come in.
doesn't feel very much like th that bit. Should be over here. So, do -do. so. Back to that. I think maybe we should delete that and have this bit there. to me in this lesson probably 10 times probably because of my getting jittery excited fingers yeah this is really really doing my head in this little bit of the track i have to say i think that this is an important point to point out this is a point of empathy um for any producer who's making music and is following along, who gets frustrated in the creative process, let me tell you, that frustration is shared by every producer who's ever produced and whoever will, regardless of their level. What I've got is I've got a track which is very, very close to finished, and I'm trying to iron out one or two crucial patches of parts of the track. And even I, and I will very much confess, even I'm feeling frustrated about the fact that the energy of this bit of the track is not quite doing what it's supposed to do. And this is absolutely natural. This is usually the point at which you take a break, which I'm about to right now. Okay, that was a 20 minute break. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the final part of the drop. Thank you. 
Then it suddenly got really quiet there. big bit and I think that maybe it shouldn't sidechain quite so hardly initially <laughs> Should I have hats at this point or not? There should also be, uh, is there a hat 16 here? Uh, um, to put in like a shake or something, but...
automation here. I mean, there's probably a few kinks that need to be ironed out, but let's consider the loudest part of the track.
it's very very top heavy there's no question about it definitely we need to uh, turn down the volume of this multi-band dynamics to calm down the highs get some of those really really high sections as good as we're going to get to a version that I'm going to play out. Just <laughs> three hours plus.
Wow. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, that is draft one done. Uh, so yeah, uh, the track wasn't finished. <laughs> that just, uh, just wasn't true. I mean, that was draft one. Uh, and I said that I was going to play it out. And indeed I am, because I just started recording this and there was a gap of maybe a week between when I finished the the track and now, uh, where I have had an opportunity to live with it and listen to it. Uh, and the gig that I'm playing, where I intend to play this track out, is, well, from recording this video right now, is going to be in two days. Because it's currently Thursday, the 26th of September, as you can see in the corner of the screen, and the gig is on the 28th. And I absolutely intend to play the track out, but there is one big fat problem. Uh, and I do think it's important to put this into context, because sometimes music production doesn't exist just within the DAW, within the moment and in and out of context. It can exist in context whenever you are preparing to perform a set. I have set myself the unique challenge of doing a producer set whereby I want all of the music to be my music. And problem being is that if now that I've set myself that target, I realized that the track which I finished, Life Force, which I call it, it's too similar to two other tracks which I made in the last couple of months in order to play them out. I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean. Here's a track which I um, finished a couple of months ago, which I have played out a couple of times, which I am going to play out. <laughs> Somewhat similar drums and similar kind of pulsating bass style. And also a similar breakdown. That in combination with the track which I made a couple of weeks ago called No Way Back, which is also quite similar, except the, the thing that's similar about this is that the breakdown here has the same lead. And somewhat similar drums and similar lead. And these tracks are both bangy bangers and I'm absolutely playing them out. But if I play Life Force, it's too similar. And I'm thinking in terms of the way the set is gonna go because I know that I'm going to be playing from 11 to 12 and I know that I'm going to be playing this track closer to the beginning of the set and this track closer to the end of the set. And if I play Life Force, in my opinion, the set will be a tad repetitive because the track itself doesn't have that... It, 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 I want the set to be a journey and I kind of feel like this track, Life Force, should probably go down a little deeper rather than go for the epic breakdown. So that is what I'm going to change. I'm actually going to reduce the melodic movement and I'm going to go for some LFO slides, which are inspired by the work of Knox Van, because actually I want... I'm trying to avoid actually playing a Knox Van track, such as Brainwasher or that in the set, because I'm determined to play my own. Uh, but I'm going to take inspiration from some of the ideas of that and incorporate that into this track. That is all the plan. Now, of course, no production session is complete without, uh, obviously, uh, the requisite sip of coffee. So feel forward to skip the next 10 seconds because it might be annoying. <sighs> It's a nice bit of foley. I should probably have recorded that and put it in the lesson. I really don't want to invent the wheel here. Um, I want it to be quite similar. Uh, and what's going to happen is I will finish the track in the version that I am the ha that I know I can confidently... I can probably play it out in the version that it is now. It's just I don't want the set to be quite so repetitive. Um, I'll finish it to that point and then whenever I'm done, I will play the track back and then I will come back for the fourth section of this video whereby... I will consider feedback and what final changes I want to make in order to get it ready to submit to a label. What label? Good question.
No fucking idea. We will play that when we come to it. Right now, I just want to know whether the track will work. And now, will it work within the set that I've planned? So. Now, the th one thing that I ne think I need to change is I'm probably going to have to change... Um, I'm probably going to have to change that ARP. Because the, the, the ARP is too similar to uh, one of the other tracks. Do, do, do. Now, I, so this is where I need to rack my brains a bit. Because actually, let me just run, run by No Way Back. Well, I mean, I could probably... I don't know for 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 the sake of for the sake of this uh, thing, I, I might be able to get away with it, but I'm I'm still thinking about changing the groove. Um, so let me just let me, let me let me play around with something else here. Let me turn off. Do this in context. That's that that that's hitting at the same time as the bass though. Do, 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 do. So I need to make sure that it's gonna to go along with the swing of the track. Make it busy. this lead. I think I'd like a sort of a do sound. So go to the envelopes and go to uh, MIDI control, P 
pitch bend. here da and also in terms of the arp uh, I'm actually very, very tempted to remove this and actually just compose the ARP uh, using the actual MIDI notes. That's the same thing. Let me see if that sounds the same. Okay, so now um, let's have this build slowly. So let's say, for example, for the first one, two, three, four bars, all this is gone. Maybe for the next four bars, these are all gone. Uh, maybe, yeah.
learned something about the sound design. To be honest, that's all. I, maybe that's all it needs. Maybe, just, just for the purpose of getting the track done in a way that it would work at this part of the, this time of the set. Maybe just minimize the melodic movement a little bit because that's going to take it into a, a different territory. I kind of want this track to roll a bit more because I'm going to be playing it fairly close to the beginning of the set, transitioning from another DJ who's going to be doing. I'm guessing uh, a different style of progressive, and I want to go deep into deep music at this point. I'm actually going to turn this off as well for a while. MIDI as well. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that?
So even that lead. Mm. Hang on. I'm going to see about making this a bit more abstract. Because I think that this lead was a... It's a little bit too into the emotive territory. Um, the sound is going to be the same, but I'm just thinking about the, the emotion. I want it to be a little bit darker. Hang on a second. Need to take a brief pause there, hang on. to avoid the high notes. I do actually like the melody I came up with. I just kind of, I think we need to make it a little bit less emotive. fed up with the idea of having to reinvent the wheel, to be honest with you.
Base, base, respace. So maybe high base. Because I really want that. Um, I have an instrument here which I call the Chris Nolan instrument. Chris Nolan lead. Ooh, it's very Knox fan. Some drives in it. sounds cool because I want it to churn. I, I, I really, really do want things to churn. on the tomb right here. Interesting timbre. Oh, I have to go back a few steps.
tonal shaping. But of this are working and I don't know about the other moments.
presentation. Drag this across and then delete this. And the same thing we said for this. Drag this across and then delete this. I think. Do you know? Uh fucking hell.
Pause a sec. Back to it. Let's re enable that. Maybe I don't need to reinvent everything. Am I thick? No, here we go. I feel like this needs to breathe a bit more. In the process of tonal shaping, I think I made the sound a little bit too dark. So, let's have a go, from the beginning. Actually, no, not from the beginning, just realize.
I don't think I want the plucking anymore. Just want...
I wonder if these are too emotion now. Let me just mute that for a second. To be honest with you, right now I can't even think about how to get rid of that. Because the track is actually too far along now. Yeah. I want to do more of that drum stuff. Where it turns into a breakbeat. So. Let's. One, two. Let's do that, I quite like that.
too big. Right, um, so here's the deal, um, straight up, I'm getting really frustrated with this track now because I feel like we're, I'm getting to the creative stalemate whereby the only thing that's going to help me know what this track needs is to just straight up bounce it, play it, see how it feels. So what I'm now going to do is essentially fixing. I'm not going to add any more to it. I'm just going to fix details. Okay. The one thing that I'm relatively happy with is that I've taken the chord progressions out, which I do like, but I kind of wanted it to be a straighter track, which has, which emphasizes the pitch bends and the darkness rather than going for the epic. Um, so this is a track that I can play early on and now it's just a process of cleaning. So I'm listening to this track, wanting it to be okay and not wanting to reinvent the wheel, but just fixing things that need to be fixed. And then I will really dig deep into what needs to be changed after I've got a chance to play it out.
Okay, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna go for the big rem the big drop, but I I do need to remove some of the space first. Used a bit more. Making sure. Yeah, make this less sudden.
maybe those notes are too low. Interesting, I wasn't expecting that.
I'm tempted to leave it there. I'm actually going to go ahead and um, I think what I might do is I might make it a bit louder. And I suspect that the track won't be absolutely perfect, but I get the feeling that uh, it'll work if I play this live. Um, and I'm definitely going to have to iron out the kinks later.
to, to do a little bit. Let's see how it goes. intense and it probably is overloaded and I know I'm going to have to clean it up but I like the intensity and I'm going to play it out very very similar to this and I know there's going to be an awful lot of EQ cleaning up I know I know I know I know I know I know but I don't give a fuck as a best I like it I like it I like it I'm going to fucking play it out like this and I'll clean it up afterwards however I improvised a bit of this so I need to fix some stuff bouncing it I'm playing it probably the second or third track into the set and um, and then I'm gonna go have to come back and fix lots of stuff which is gonna really really fucking piss me off but I'm gonna do it anyway so yeah there you go uh, bye for now testing testing okay so now we have come to the actual uh, this is gonna sound like the end of the final Lord of the Rings movie which it just keeps ending and ending and ending but this is literally the last bit I have played the track out uh, it was the last song in the set and I would say that it was an absolute smash. I was delighted with how well, not only how it went down, but it sounded really powerful as well. It sounded really, really strong. And that is considering the fact that I didn't have the best sound system to play on because there wasn't enough sub bass because we were in the wrong room. Don't even get me started on that. But it sounded really, really powerful. And it... Oh... Yeah, it was good. Um, however, as you can see here, the final master we look at, says edit. I have actually made changes, which I made 
literally on the day of the gig, literally on the day of the gig, because I thought there were two things I felt that this track needed. Apart from, I mean, the, I don't think I tweaked too much. I think there was a bit when the lead comes in, which I decided to mute right at the beginning because I just wanted to have a longer stretch of the track without too many melodic elements. The same thing with the pad. I think I eased the pad in. So therefore you wouldn't have too much melodic elements. So therefore it would be easier to DJ from the previous track. Although in the end it didn't matter because the previous track, I just decided to transpose into the key of this one anyway. So they both would have blended in fine. It's interesting producing in context and for a gig, it does change your approach an awful lot. Um, I want, I extended the end of it. That was one big, big part. I felt like that um, section, whenever the melody starts to descend and ascend, which you saw me constructing at the end of the last video, I duplicated that and then I gave it one last big bit of welly. Uh, that thing I composed, uh, the melody which I composed on the flight, perfect. It, it just came up to me instinctively. It worked really, really well. And I did the same thing here, except I just played around with the filter just to give it a bit more... Just to really, really scream over the top. And the other thing is, one big change that I made in the breakdown was I decided to incorporate a sample which I had been dying to incorporate into... Uh, and a piece of electronic music for a long time, which, um, oh yeah, copyright infringement. It comes from the computer game Time Spitters 2, um, the level, which is called Neo Tokyo. Let me just show you what the sample sounds like. And, I th and I've always loved this track uh, in, in this computer game. And it just occurred to me spontaneously, fucking hell, it would sound great in the breakdown of the track. So that is what I decided to do. And let me just show you what it sounds like at that point. Pretty sure I also um, filtered out the low end of the drums at this point. Actually, I didn't. I didn't do it on the drums. I did it on the kick, which I think I was already doing. But where, I don't know. Oh yeah, so yeah, filtering that out. Just to allowing for the smoothest possible transition and then into the main bit. I did decide for the bass to descend and ascend just like it does towards the end because I really felt like there was there needed to be an emotional component coming towards the end because there's something formidable about the composition of this track when you just go da, da. but I felt that there needed to be something a little bit more vulnerable emotionally speaking because I knew that that would communicate something to the crowd and it really really worked so therefore the melody goes up and down and then it comes back in and the drop is the same. Descending bass lines 
are incredibly emotionally evocative and powerful because physically they get you and emotionally they get you as well. Not to overlook that I do have pitch bend envelopes, again, just to give that the sense of instability and almost menace, which I, which is very me. This is, this is what I loved about the fact that this track started from, you know, using the basic wave sample packs, trying to create something that was a bit of a vibe and then getting the opportunity to slowly turn it into something which is actually a part of me. So you're actually seeing my artistic temperament coming out here at this particular point for this particular scenario. I mean, I, there, are, I, there are a lot of things I like to make, but this, this really started doing it for me. This section is the same. Uh, the only difference is instead of coming back to this section here, it goes one bigger. Everything thrown in, full intensity, probably too much, but it smashed this moment. Absolutely smashed. How did that happen? Uh, just to go one more, uh, you put in a ride. Just to give it that boost in the high end. There's an LFO here, which I attach to the start time, so therefore the sound is very, very slightly different every time. Not that, really not that you'd notice in the mix. I probably didn't even need to do that. And just a bit of reverb to wash out some of the sharpness. And this sample comes back in again. Because again, this is a very, very... The chord movement in this works perfectly, 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 perfectly with the bass. And again, because I couldn't allow the sample to bleed into this section because drums start to come in and it's completely offbeat, I had to do a really, really long uh, curve of slowly turning it down and then it would just, the other sounds would blend into it seamlessly. <laughs> At the end of every eight bar section, just having another white noise wash, because again, you the hands, you want the hands to stay up at this point. So yes, this bit is very, very bright and bright. Okay, but it's, it's just in the club, it just worked. And then the track ends in the same way. So, and then I uh, exported it. Maybe now I'll just take an opportunity to see if there are any uh, changes that I would make to the mix down at this point, because frankly, this is the point at which I would go ahead and submit this to an engineer to do the mastering for me, or even to do a mix down, because I have come very, very uh, far along with the mixing at this point that it, it benefits most dramatically from a second set of ears. But I can tell you from having played it out that it, jolly well works. Let's actually have a moment to listen through.
than 125 as opposed to 124. Uh, the reason why I did that is because I realised that if I'm going to be playing this track towards the end of my set, I was probably going to have to speed it up a bit. Uh, and obviously on the CDJs, you can speed it up um, as much as you want. Well, within maybe five or six BPMs. But I thought I just needed... I didn't want the original... Uh, version to be fast. I knew I was going to probably speed it up to 126 live, so I felt that 125 as my export would be the happy middle ground.
And there you have it. So as you can see, it's a subtle little um, lullaby. Yeah, okay. It's obviously a very, very big one. It's very, very intense. It's very, very full on. And I fucking love it. I have to be, I have to be honest with you. I absolutely love it. And it's, mm, as far as I'm concerned, the track is done. And I'm very, very happy that I got to this point because it's very interesting the, in the production process where sometimes the process can start mechanically and the more you put yourself into it the more it becomes personal and I kind of feel like there's a story arc in the ending section with the melody which speaks to me more than even what was built in the first half and I kind of feel like the second half has power because of the first half and uh, not what sure what else to say other than I'm very very proud of the track and I do hope that having spent all of the time with this video I, I, I can't even imagine how long this video is going to be that uh, you do learn a couple of things and uh, e yeah can't wait to play this track out at my next gig and every gig from that point onwards so thanks guys toodaloo